Robbie, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to a very enthralling session this morning. Um, as you know, you've uh, communicated to me that you wanted to do some training on communicating on the telephone, and I've been managed to find a competency that talks to that topic, and we we'll get through a lot of uh, different behaviours and, and techniques to be able to communicate effectively on the telephone. Um, this session, the Unit of Competency, forms part of an overall program, Certificate 4 in Hospitality, which I know you've been contemplating doing down the track. Uh, but more importantly, this unit now will give you some uh, additional strengths in this facet, because I know that's part of uh, your work responsibilities. And um, I look forward to going through some detail with you today. How's that sound? Awesome. Um, before we start, Robbie, I just wanted to explain um, some WHS uh, procedures. In the, in the uh, event of an emergency, uh, with evacuation points in this venue, there's an exit door there, down the end of that corridor, yep. and one down the end of this corridor as well. In the case of uh, a very urgent emergency, you have to get out really quickly. These windows here open up and you can just pop out these large windows on our side here. Um, and the bathroom is the first door on your right, down the end of that corridor there. All right, how's it, is that okay? Yep. Excellent. All right, um, so look, today uh, we're going to cover communicate on the telephone and it's going to be split up into a couple of sections, predominantly uh, incoming phone calls and also outgoing phone calls, so making a call. Uh, I'm going to run through a lot of the uh, basic structure of techniques and habits that you need to learn. Some I'm sure you already know, some, some you'll, you'll pick up today. We'll also go through a bit of a, a mock simulation of a phone call. That I'll get you to make one and also to receive one as well. And we'll finally discuss uh, a plan to review uh, the phone calls moving forward. Okay? Mm -hmm. How's that sound to you? Sounds good. Okay, excellent. Let's get started. Look, I think uh, just before we, we get into the, the nitty gritty, um, Phone calls. Look, for me, uh, I used to manage a call centre um, and I understand the power of the telephone. I think it's very underrated and underestimated in a lot of industries. Um, congratulations to you for, for, for seeking this, uh, this competency and trying to get better at it. I think it's a very powerful tool um, and, and can be used effectively in a number of ways. So um, there's nothing worse than... than you know, receiving a phone call or making a phone call and, and getting someone on the other end that's unprofessional, uh, maybe doesn't want to help, doesn't have the right attitude. Um, because you don't see that person in front of you, what happens is your hearing becomes really in tune with what's happening and you're picking up everything on the phone. You're picking up the tone, the pause, the type of language they use because you're visualising who that person is versus when you see someone... Sometimes you, your, their appearance um, overpowers what they actually say. You know, or there's a combination there at least. Um, I'm sure you've received phone calls in the past from people that you think, you know, what was that all about? Yeah, definitely. And maybe made some phone calls to companies and received some pretty poor service. Would that have happened to you in the past? Many, many times. Many times? How does it make you feel? Well, not the best. Yeah. Well, at least you know that uh, you know you, that won't be happening as a result of you once you finish this uh, this competency. All right. Okay. Let's get let's get started and let's talk a little bit about um, incoming incoming phone calls. Um, now, let's go through some of the steps to to uh, to improve in that area. And look, the first one I put there is uh, when an incoming call comes in. You need to answer it promptly, clearly, and politely. Now let's talk. Let's break that up just briefly. The promptly. Well, what would be your interpretation of promptly? How soon do you think is an acceptable time? How many rings before you answer the phone call? I'd say before it hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that 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 talks to the tolerance of the caller, really. So, so if you're calling, how soon would you expect someone to call? Especially if you're calling a business. Maybe within five rings? Five rings. You've got a pretty good level of tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> Industry standard, Rob, is three. Okay. Mm. Um, and often call centers are managed that way. 
So they have a, 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 an objective to answer 80% of all phone calls within three rings. That's, that's, a, that's a very common objective with an incoming call. Uh, obviously, the, it's very hard to get 100, but some people come in and end up in a queue and end up waiting beyond those three calls. But if you're calling someone, and uh, generally what, what the perception there is, if it's not answered within three rings, you haven't given the caller a good experience, and if it's five or more rings, there's a tendency that they might hang up and then call another business for what they're after, and you might lose it. So that's really about making sure you capture that call before you lose it and give them a good experience. So, so to wow them, I would say one ring. Industry standard, three rings. Beyond that, um, you, need to, you need to then convince them in the phone call because you haven't got off to a good start. If everyone's busy in, with other customers, what, what, how, how would you deal with that? Would you yep. answer and put them straight on hold? or? Yep, so what, what within three rings you mean? Three rings. Yeah, I, the option there is if you're tied up with a customer already, um, what, what, do you, what do you think the option would be there? Maybe to ask them to wait a moment. Yep. Answer the call and put that, on hold. That, that's one. Um, then you don't know how long you're going to be. So what's another option? I don't know. Um, Let it ring till five. <laughs> no. <laughs> no that's, not, that's not a good option because you might upset them and they'll ring another store. Um, it could be to take their name and number and just let them know that you're busy with a customer, that you'll call them back within a great time frame. You'd probably say something like an hour, that way you give yourself time to finish with your current customer. Um, the other thing you would do is maybe, and what we, I've done in previous work, is, is have an answering machine, um, which captures their call within three rings. So, and the message would be something like, all of our staff are busy with other customers at the moment. Could you please leave your name and number? Your call is very important, we'll call you back shortly. Now, you're still living it up to the caller there, Mm-hmm. And statistics will tell you 50% will hang up and the other 50 will leave a message, uh, depending on where you work. So the risk of not answering that phone call in a business environment is you, you could be missing a sale and, a, and your business income. Yeah, so you, you got to try to have something there to capture it. That's why a lot of businesses have a designated person capturing incoming calls, a secretary, whatever it might be. Um, it, it's just bad business to lose those opportunities, you know what I mean? But there, there, there are numerous, numerous options there as well. Um, answer clearly. Um, that that's another another point that uh, is probably one of my pet hates. People will pick up the phone and rattle off their company and their name details so quickly. They've done it habitually. They don't even you can't even hear what they're, what they're saying. So you've got to be clear in your delivery. So you know, uh, good morning, uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. This is Frank. Right? So I've said it slowly and clearly and people understand where I'm coming from. And sometimes what people tend to do is say it so quickly that the call hasn't even captured. So the, the, the initial good morning, you only, you only might hear in. Yeah. Right? So you've got, to be, you've got to pause a second, say it clearly so the person understands and politely in, in, a, in a friendly tone. So a couple of key points here. Uh, any views on all those? Have you, have you seen those in action? No. Uh, do you, do you agree, disagree? Definitely agree. Yeah? Yeah, there's a couple of people at my work who I think wouldn't speak clearly at all on the phone. Yeah. And what, what impression do you think they're giving the customer? Not good ones. Yeah. So you, you, you've got to put that... It's pretty basic uh, techniques, but make sure you, you stick to that. Uh, offer friendly assistance. So how, how would you do that? How may I help you? Yes. Good. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> What else? Uh, you could, you could tell them what sales you have running or something like that. So yeah, that's that probably gets down more to um, when they're asking you questions about uh, certain products, um, and, and those sales uh, pitches that you, you referred to there, they tend to be on a on an on hold message. So you know, um, you know, the, the machine might take the call to say all our staff are busy with customers. We'll be with you in a moment. And then they'll start to play what shoes or what clothes are on sale, and then you pick up the call. So that's a, that's another sales pitch there. But offer friendly assistance. You you, you nailed it there. Um, how may I help you? You know, it's 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 said in a friendly tone. It's very concise, mm-hmm. and that, that language is very appropriate. Um, uh, try to use the word may, which I'm glad you did, and not uh, can. Um, may is a little bit more uh, dignified, a little bit more polite. Okay. 
Um, now the person will obviously tell you something there, what the, the reason for their call. And it's important that you've captured the right information so that way you can take it away and deliver on that request. And the best way to do that is to repeat or summarize that, those details, especially if it's a, a long-winded request. You know, so how would you say that? If, if you ask me, how, how am I helping? And I said to you, uh, Robbie, um, I, I, I bought a pair of shoes and um, I really wanted to um, uh, get a better size, bigger size or another option in terms of colour. I wasn't too happy with the first ones. Um, what, what would you say to that? I would say what was wrong with the first ones so I could see how to correct it. Yep. Um, Good. And then I'd say, but you want the bigger, what was the original size, maybe? Yeah. That okay. can then get the base details to yeah. try and find other options. Good. So within that, what you've just done there, you have a bit of a... Um, you, you reviewed some of the details, as well as trying to offer a solution in the same pitch, which is which is good. And that way, I, I'm an, I, I understand as a caller that you've heard what I've said. Do you understand? So that, that that's yeah. what sounds good to me. So you repeat it. Uh, the other, the other, what, what other thing could you do when you're on the phone? Do you think? Take notes. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. What would you take notes? Um, probably it's the key details. Yes. Maybe one worders. Yeah. Mm. And then when you need to look for, or when you put the patient, the patient, the sub, the customer back on hold, mm. you have something to remember in case you get interrupted by someone. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So excellent point. Um, why be memory dependent when you don't have to? That's what I say. Yeah. So you've got a pen and paper, jot down the key words, and it helps you review it back to the customer. Especially if it's something you need to take away and get back to the customer an hour later. You've, got, you've already got those key points down there. Yeah. And it shows the customer that you're listening. There's nothing worse than trying to repeat what they've said, trying to remember everything they've said, and you only get half of it right. Mm-hmm. That's another poor experience on the customer side, and they feel like you're not listening. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, well done. Uh, so good, then uh, let's move on to the next one, which is answer the inquiry. So obviously if you've got a, you know, in, in the example we've used with shoes, let, let's stick to that, you've got a couple other options, um, you would respond accordingly and say, yep, no problems, we have these sizes available, would you like me to put one aside for you, when will you come in to pick them up? Mm-hmm. Now if you're in the clothes department and you didn't know, you would then look to transfer the call. Now, what do you think is key when you're transferring a call to another department? Give them the notes. Good. So, I don't know, if you've written it down, hand it over to them, or... Yep. Um, having a good transfer of, of information. Yep. So, so have, you ever, have you ever made a phone call where someone had to put you through to someone else, and you had to repeat everything you said the second time, that you did from the first? Mm-hmm. Time wasting. Big time. And you feel like the first person... Did they really care? Do you feel like what well, was the point of me being on the phone to them? Yeah. I just passed them straight to you and then you could have heard it That's from right. the mouth. Yeah, it's sort of like the person cared a little bit because they transferred through the right person, but they could have cared more by telling them what you were calling about. Mm. How beautiful does it sound when you transfer a call through and that person, for example, says, Hi, Robbie. Um, my name is Tom. I understand you made a call because you've got some concerns about your shoes and you're looking for another size, another colour. Is that right? So you would get someone to repeat it again. That sounds professional. And it's called a, a smooth transition versus, you know, I'm not sure why they transfer through to me, mm. you know, and you have to repeat yourself. So when you're transferring the call, you're spot on, make sure you do an introduction. Um, you can tell the person you, you're transferring to what the call's about. Mm-hmm. And often then the facility on the phone will allow you to press a button and it's a conference call. So for five seconds or 10 seconds, there's three of you. Then you, then you can actually introduce them like you would in person. Yeah. So say, Robbie, this is Tom. Tom's going to help you with the shoes, you do it over the phone. And it becomes a more formal, and then the two people will start to speak. That, that's doing it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, statistically in the industries, it's not done that well, unfortunately. So, so um, yeah, transferring a call. How does that sound? Definitely something I'll try and use. Yeah, good. Good. Uh, the next point you've already covered off in terms of recording the details to pass it on, if necessary. Um, so always have pen and paper ready next to the phone and make sure you're jotting notes down. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you might even, and, and you know what, some people even keep the notes 
uh, because the next day, later on that day, the next day, next week, it comes up again and maybe there were some discrepancies with the discussion. So you pull your notes out and there it is. You've written down what it was. Yeah. Uh, people tend to throw it away as soon as the, the call is, uh, is finished. So, you know, you might so keep, you keep it... keep a diary or something? Keep a diary or keep it in a book or in a drawer or if it's on, you know, sticky note pad, paper or something like that. Mm-hmm. So you, you can never have uh, too much information. I think the more you have, the more chance you have of satisfying the customer. Relaying messages within timelines. Here's an important one. What do you think that, that refers to? Um, I'm going to go along the lines of three rings that you... Make sure that the person you pass the customer on to gets back to pay, gets back to your customer as quickly as possible. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So, how are they going to do that? Well, how are you going to make sure that they're going to get back promptly? What do you need to do? Follow them up. Good. Follow them up. But before you do that, maybe give the customer a realistic timeline. Very good. A time frame. Yeah. Good. I told them we'll get back to you in 15 minutes or 10 minutes or something. It's a bit more stretched, so they're more impressed when they get. That's right. Yeah, good. So, so that's that's often known as under promise over deliver. Okay. Right. That that terminology. So um, it's important that when you pass those messages on, that you uh, do it very promptly, because that way you give the recipient maximum chance to do it quicker. Quicker. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, there's no point you holding on to that message until you're free. And then you have five customers of your own, and then you pass it on an hour later. So that customer's waiting, it's already been an hour, and the person you pass it to, he's in the middle of some busy period, and it takes him an hour to address it, and then another hour to call back, and all of a sudden that's how you get your three hours, instead of yeah. passing on immediately. Um, technology will allow you to do that these days by email, most of the time, which I think is, is, captures it as a record in your outbox when you've sent it, mm-hmm. the time you've sent it and it hits the other person immediately, and usually most people have email on their phone these days so they get the message straight away, so you've done that. Then don't rely on it. I would normally put something like, please confirm receipt of message. So that way they'll send the back and say, no worries, Robbie, got those details, I'll give them a call within an hour. Now, to, to give the customer a brilliant experience, you're spot on, I would ring that person within that time frame and say, how did you go? And if they have or they haven't, or they've been delayed, you might be the person to bring the customer back and say, look, I've passed that on, but Tom is uh, in the middle of something uh, long-winded and we'll call you back by this date and just you're giving him an update. All right? yeah. So, so you're, you're tidying it all up without leaving it to chance. But there's nothing worse than someone waiting by the phone for the phone to ring. I think we've all done it mm-hmm. and that time seems an eternity. <laughs> so if you get an update from someone who's efficient, you, you're, going to, um, you, you're going to give the customer a good experience and give them a you know, uh, a, ch- a chance to do business with you. Yeah. Sound all right? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we'll also talk about uh, appropriate language, tone and volume. Um, now, what's appropriate? What do you think is women by appropriate? Um, no swearing. <laughs> no, no swearing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I'd say minimal jargon. Yes. Very good. You're trying to stay in layman's terms. Like Excellent. understand. Yeah. Um, English. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Yep. Other than that, maybe like treat them professionally. You aren't being too joking around. Yeah. Maybe calling customers bro. Yeah, very like good. That. Very good. That's happened to me recently. Um, uh, you know, you've got to be careful where some of the language you use is habitual in your personal life, like bro or like g'day, because that sometimes will come out in the professional world because you, you're so used to doing it. So you've got to tweak it in your personal life for it to become a habit that you transfer into your professional life so you don't do that. So that's that's good, your language, the tone of your voice, the volume to be clear, um, to be heard well. What's a way you can you can practice that to know that you you know that you are doing the right things in terms of language, tone and volume? Um, practice answering the phone. <laughs> oh. Practice, but how, but how do you know? Because to you, your tone and your volume is good. But how do you know that it's appropriate in terms of a phone call? How would you know? Maybe send a new voicemail message and then hear it back. That, yeah, that's good. That's a good tool. That's one. What else? Uh, speaking to you. Yeah. yeah, just talking to your colleagues. Or get your colleague to, to ring you and, and, and hear you out. 
maybe get three, three of your, your colleagues to ring throughout the course of 10 minutes mm-hmm. and give you specific feedback separately, right? Because each of the people will have, you know, and that way if, if two or three say, yep, your tone and your volume is great, your language, just cut out that word because you're not even realising you're doing it. It gives you a, a more, a more um, complete assessment of, of those skills for you. All right? So you, you use your resources around you, your family, your friends, your work colleagues. Like sport, the more you practice something, the better you're going to be at it. Mm-hmm. All right? Sound all right? Yep. The last thing that I wanted to just quickly mention, especially when it comes to business, is uh, reporting threatening calls. Right? So um, what you'll find and what you need to maybe check with your employer is that there is a, a, you know, a checklist of what to do if the business receives a threatening phone call. Um, you can imagine a threatening call coming in of any kind. Um, it, it would be a state of panic for the recipient. Worry. Uh, concern, not sure what to do next. So, so most businesses will clearly have a checklist of what needs to happen if a threatening call comes in. And all you've got to do is read it and follow follow the, the course of the activities. Mm-hmm. So who, who do you have to report it to? Who do you call? You know, is there an evacuation in place? Who's your evacuation officer? And you just follow that. You'll be, you know, a little bit uh, concerned and a bit, um, you know, hyper about it. And that's why if you, if you just read a document, you, you know, you don't have to think about it, you just got to do what it says. So reporting threatening phone calls is, is very important. Every business should have a checklist in case something came in for that. All right, so, so, so make your point. So, so screaming out and the back going out the back door isn't, isn't right? <laughs> it's not, it's not because it could be a state of panic that could cause other disruptions and it may not be the, the appropriate thing to do at the time depending on the type of call. All right, generally you'd be referring it to your manager um, and uh, evacuation officer, and then there'll be a, a, a course that generally involves authorities like police, um, and there'll be an action points depending on the type of threat. You know, you could be shutting the business or you could be evacuating. Um, it, it, there's a whole range of things there. So it's important, I think, for you to check with your employer, make a note of it um, if you can, um, to check your, with your employer, and then I, su- I suggest some training sessions for the group. All right? Mm-hmm. How does that sound? Sounds good. Incoming phone calls. All right. How about we give it a bit of a shot? Let's say uh, do a bit of practical work mm-hmm. just to pick up the phone and pretend you're taking a, an incoming call. And remember the key points there. Answer promptly within three rings. Uh, clearly, politely, offer friendly assistance. Repeat call details briefly. Um, answer the inquiry. Um, and record the details and we'll go from there. All right? Now, I'll, I'll, I'll be the customer, but you can use this, this telephone here to do that. Okay. All right. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about. Normally, you wouldn't see the caller. So I can stand behind the whiteboard if you want. That's <laughs> all right. I'll just look that way. <laughs> all right. Okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Nike Factory Burger Head Point. This is Roberto speaking. How may I help you? Hi Roberto, this is Frank. Um, I uh, bought a pair of shoes from you recently and uh, the laces have come undone. Um, they're, not, uh, they're not tying up properly. So I was wondering uh, what I can do about that. Okay, so they were laces of what shoe? It was what colour was your shoe, sorry? Uh, it was a blue uh, tempo shoe. And it has blue laces? Yes, that's right. Okay, no worries. I'll just swipe that down. Thanks for that. And what we'll do, Frank, is I'll get some of my colleagues in the footwear department to have a look for some blue laces. Yes. And in the meantime, I'm just going to place you on hold and I'll make sure they get back to you as soon as possible, okay? Sounds great. Thanks, Robbie. All right, I'll put you on hold, Frank. Now I'd be calling footwear. So I'll press the footwear button. Yep, hi, Jake. Um, We have Frank on line one who has a pair of blue tiempos and his um, blue laces of the tiempos have, um, there's something wrong with them. I was wondering if you could have a look around for any blue shoelaces and um, answer the call as soon as possible. And, and when, you, when you do get to him, remember his name's Frank and to address him um, politely. Uh, thanks mate, bye. Okay, how did you think it went? 
Nah, I don't know. <laughs> I think I did all right. I was uh, focusing on the transfer part of it. That's the, mm-hmm. the main thing that I think I've, I lack in. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, it wasn't a threatening, call, threatening calls. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's, it's important to practice the threatening calls as well. So when you do that, the training, by the way, um, actually have someone pretend to make a threatening call so that way you, you, you fall into line when that's to happen. But that, that was very good. That was excellent. Uh, your tone was clear. It was friendly. You repeated what I had to say. You addressed me by name. You wrote the details. You transferred that to, uh, to another department. Um, if the phone allows, and this is what you have to check with your phone at work, you would probably do a warm transfer. So you might say, uh, Jake, uh, I've got Frank online. Uh, Frank, I've already explained to Jake what, he, what the issues with his shoes. Go in, please. Right? That would be the, 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 if the phone allows to do that. Yeah. Other than that, you did very, very well. So well done. Thank you. Okay, excellent. All right, let's move into just a brief session on outgoing phone calls. All right, so um, when you're making a call, uh, it's, it's a couple of things that you need to point out. Obviously, the most important to start off is to obtain the correct call details. So what's the customer's name? What phone, what's the phone number? Most these days will have a preferred call time. So make sure you stick to that call. If they prefer to be called between 11 and 12 on a Tuesday morning, then you call between 11 and 12 on a Tuesday morning. If you call outside of those hours for whatever reason, because you missed that opportunity, you better make reference to it and apologise and then ask them if it's a still good time to speak. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's important. Um, obtaining the correct details at the start. Right? Mm-hmm. The other thing I would also be wary of is the pronunciation of the customer's name, if you haven't spoken to them before. So if it's a tricky name, try to get someone of, uh, of that background to maybe repeat that name to you, and you can practice it so you say it properly. Right? Nothing like getting the name wrong when you first start. It gets it off to a bad, bad, uh, bad, nice. bad start. Yeah. The second thing you do is clearly establish the purpose of the call. So why are you calling? So in the case that we just used there, you're calling because you've, you've found some laces for the shoe. Um, as per your inquiry, um, we're happy to let you know that we've located some. You know, how, how can we get this out to you? Something like that. So establishing the purpose. Um, you'd also mention, obviously, at the start, your name and, and the company from where you're calling from as well. I, I, meant, I meant to mention that in there. So where you, who you are, where you're from, and why you're calling, the purpose. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, the equipment. Um, make sure that you're using the telephone correctly. So again, if you're going to be writing things down, you might have a headset at work which you can, you can plug on and you're hands-free that way and you're writing. Um, if not, if you're making a call and you have to transfer it, similar to what you did when you had an incoming call, you've got to make sure you're aware of the techniques to use with the phone to be able to transfer it through. If you're not, you know, if you're using a phone for the first time, get someone to show you with all the buttons up. Because these days phones can do so many things and you might press the wrong number. Okay? Mm-hmm. Obviously, always be polite and courteous. You might start with the words, as promised, as discussed, because you're following up on a previous inquiry when you're making an outgoing call, usually, unless it's a call that you're trying to pitch a sale, which is a different type of uh, technique, which we'll cover later on in another session. So if you're getting back to someone, uh, you promised them within an hour, and it's half an hour later, you would say something like, as promised, I said I was going to call you back within the hour, um, I've got some great news, I've located and, and away you go. So you, you get off to a, a double barrel start there in terms of saying that you, you've met their commitment mm. and you found something as well. So it, it's a good, it's a great, satisfying, satisfying call. The other thing you would do is document the outcome, right? So documenting the outcome is important because, you know, these type of uh, inquiries are obviously, you know, the, the data for it is kept by the company, um, whether it's a complaint issues with the shoes in this case, um, how many products are sold. So you need to be able to find out where you document it. You don't document it, it, it goes uh, un- unnoticed. So sometimes if it's within the issue we have with the shoes, if you don't document that, there could be five inquiries that day in a big department store about shoelaces. No one's documenting it. So no one's going back to the supplier to say, listen, you've got an issue with the, with the shoelaces. You see what I mean? So, so the importance of documenting it means the resolution could be widespread across the whole department. All right? How does that sound? Yeah, pretty good. Sound good? All right. How about you making an outgoing call then? <laughs> so remember, 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. You, you're addressing the person, so you can address me. Say it's, just say it's Mr. Frank. Um, why? Where you're from? Why you're calling? And then we'll go with the same example of the shoelaces with the shoe, um, and that you resolved it, and that you're um, you're arranging for me to come and collect the replacement. All right. Okay. Let's bring the phone in again. So you're making it. Okay. Hello? Hello, is this Frank? Yes, it is. Hi, Frank, this is Roberto calling from Nike Birkenhead Point Shopping Centre. Oh, hi, hi, Roberto. How are you today? Very well. Thanks for calling back. Yeah, all good. Um, as promised, um, I've spoken to the guys in footwear and they've found the shoelaces. Now, we're wondering, um, do you live nearby or how we can get the shoelaces out to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm only five minutes walk from, from Birkenhead. Okay, awesome. So, um, whenever you're ready, we'll have the shoelaces waiting at the registers for you. Yes. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> so, whenever you're ready to come in, um, they'll be here. Okay. Um. <laughs> Great. All right, I'll see you soon. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, thank you. All right, that was good. That, that was, was good. more awkward than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, the only thing there was obviously the ending, because you haven't rehearsed it. You probably didn't think about it. Mm. So the ending, what, what else could you have said? Well, I, dro so, I dropped in that as promised. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to get that out. Everything was great right up until that end part. The end just sounded a little bit awkward. So you could have offered to speak to you. If I'm here, I'll be happy to assist. If not, mention your name and you can collect it. The laces will be at the register, like you said. And the last thing is, of course, an offer for assistance. Is there anything else I can help you with for, for now? No? Great. We'll see you later on today, and that's it. Okay. But your tone was good, um, you sounded positive, and obviously you resolved the issues and the concerns, which is good. All right, how does that sound? Yeah, good. All right, good. Well done. Um, you, you, today we've covered incoming and outgoing calls, which is great, and I think you've got the, the gist of the, the most of the techniques with both of those. Now, what I wanted to propose as part of your work-based learning plan this is something that we need to practice to become better at. Mm -hmm. um, so the more you do it, the better it will be. So there's a couple of ways we can, we can do this, take it to the next level. Um, what I wanted to propose was that during the week, you um, continue to take the phone calls as, uh, as required at work. First of all, if you have any difficult calls, could I ask you to document what they were? So if you feel like you stumbled in any part of the call, you didn't get to the resolution quick enough, whatever it might have been, as, more, as small as the issue is that you think, write it down and we'll cover those, right? Secondly, if you could ask your supervisor at work whether it would be possible for a specific time frame whether you could take your phone calls. Most facilities have that with telephones these days and you'd be surprised when we review those calls how much better we can be in, in terms of you know, finding out where you, you may have stumbled or where you could have done better. So we'll get you know, maybe an hour's worth of, uh, or two hours worth of taped calls and we'll do a review as well. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, the other way uh, which I'd like to uh, monitor your progress, if it was all right with you and your boss, and I, if you could ask them if I can come in and observe you on the phone as well um, and just take some notes in the background so you can't see me. Um, so I propose if we can do that, how about, um, well, it's still fresh, we'll do that next week. Yep. What I wanted to propose is maybe on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we'll meet and cover the calls you took on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then on Thursday, we'll meet again at 6 o'clock and cover the Wednesday and Thursday phone calls. How does that sound to you? Sounds good. All right, so that way, you, three things you've got to do there. So ask your supervisor if you can take the calls, document if, uh, if you have any difficult calls, and you might have one or two, and also ask permission at the, at the second phase if I can come in and observe as another level. And we'll ramp this up, and within no time you'll have this down, Pat, because you, you've done really well today. Um, as Like everything, you could be good at it, more practice makes you great. All right? How does yeah. that sound as a work plan? plan? Sounds awesome. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. All right. Look, thanks very much for your, your participation, your attendance today. Um, as I said, uh, this, this unit of competency communicate on the telephone is part of an overall certificate for in hospitality, uh, but it's a key component in many industries. I applaud you for taking it on. Um, 
and, you, and you're very good. You've got some great, great competency already. Um, with this workplace plan, we'll get better and, and make you a master at it. All right? Awesome. Good on you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right. Good luck with it.